Okay. So, you know, one, one of the things that I've learned, and I've been shooting video for a very, very long time. And I got introduced to shooting video back when I was in, working in real estate, uh, back when I lived in Las Vegas, Nevada. And what happened was in October 2009, and remember, YouTube was still in its infancy back then. In October 2009, I, was, I, had, I went to a real estate conference somewhere in California. I don't remember where. And they were giving away uh, two raffle prices. And there's probably like 400 or 500 people that were at that event. And at that event, I was the one that won the second raffle prize. And that second raffle prize changed my life forever. Now, I'm going to show you what I want. And by the way, it, it does still work, even though I don't use it. It does still work. But some of you might actually recognize the, or might recognize this thing. And I'm going to hold it up. And if you recognize what it is, go ahead and put, it, go ahead and put your, your idea, what, it, what you think it is, uh, in the chat box. I think Michael recognizes it. And Rush, I, don't, I can't tell. He's kind of pretty much stonewall face. I can't tell. Now, what this is, Flip Cam had one. So, Michael, so this thing here, well, at the in 2009, this was about a $200, maybe a $250 device. It was it was an in, in your pocket camcorder. And it what it would do, it was get no, it's not an iPod. Um, so what, what this did, it was an in-pocket camcorder where you could record up to one hour of video. And you will see here, it's got these little arrows here as well. So you can record more than one video, but you can only have one hour of storage space. And what you would do is you record the video, you push that little button, a little USB uh, device will come out, you plug it into your computer, move the video from your uh, from the device here to your computer, so then you can start uh, playing around editing it. I shot probably over 400 videos with this thing because I was in real estate, and what I was and what I one of the things I learned is that uh, video is key for your uh, for your business. One of the things that, uh, it, especially if you're going to be in a service-based industry, your face is part of your brand. You may have your logo. You may have that. That's part of your brand as well. But your face is also going to be part of your brand, especially if you're going to be a small business. When I started shooting video, uh, what I would do for every house that I was representing, I would actually shoot three parts to a video. <clears throat> I, would, I would shoot part one and part three at the same time, you know, concurrently. And then I would shoot part two. And what and the and the three parts were uh, when I was at a house, I was standing in front. Of, I would put the, the this on a tripod, and I was uh, and I would look into the camera, and I would introduce the house. I say, "Hello, my name is Kevin Dunlap. I'm with a Trident Investments Group, and today we're at one two three Main Street, and this is on the crossroads of Jones and uh, 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 Jones and uh, Alexander. This is a four bedroom, three and a half. Bed. So I go through the details of the house, just giving the details of the house. But the, you're seeing my face talking in front of the camera." Once I was done shooting that video, what I would then do is I would call do, do what I call the tail slate, the, this, the, 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 the final part of the video. So what I would do is I, I get the can uh, I've already paused, I already stopped the recording or on, on my cell phone, I already stopped the recording. I change my background, like a pivot or walk into a kitchen, make sure I had a different background. And I just did that just to mix things up. And I would actually then do what I call the tail slate, which would be, well, thank you for taking a look at 123 Main Street. You can find more information on our website at www. And I, you know, I, I would give my contact information at the very end of the video. And then in the editing uh, process, I would do what uh, yeah, I would do the credits. The credits would just be, here's the address, here's my name, here's my email address, here's my phone number, it, it, uh, as well as my website. So th that's uh, that's uh, so that's what I did for uh, several years. And what, the, what that did was it gave me so much credibility, so much trust, because when somebody sees you're talking and you're giving good content, they're going to trust you a lot more. And then when they meet you face to face or meet you online uh, face to face, uh, there's a much better chance that they're going to be wanting to work with you. Now, this is what I did back then. Uh, I uh, Before I got my real estate license, I would actually, uh, for eight years, I was a, I was a real estate consultant. And I would actually shoot video of all the houses. And essentially, the houses were actually the houses that were going to be for a lease with option to buy. So I would find an owner that had a vacant home um, in the Las Vegas area. Then I would market that. I would take videos and pictures of the home. And then I would create an advertising campaign to, to, to find the tenant buyer that was going to be moving into that home. 
And that's what I did. I mean, I, over and over and over again, shot so many homes. One of the things I, I that really shocked me is on a lease option, uh, there's this thing called an option payment. That's them buying the right to buy the home. So for an example, if a house is $300,000 and you're charging, say, a 3% option payment, that's $9,000 that the tenant buyer is going to be uh, putting down. And that's going to be applied toward the purchase of the home. I would say after I started shooting video, after maybe about a year or so, because um, most people wrote me checks or money orders or got a certified check, you know, however, however that way that we did it. But uh, but uh, since Vegas is also a very service oriented town, not everybody that, that makes money like uh, tips, like uh, a bartender or, or a dancer or a valet or, or, or whatever, they would not always put their money in the banks. And I would say probably like 10% of the time, the, the person who would come to me, wanted to move forward with the lease option, and they're paying me in cash, $10,000 in cash, $15,000 in cash. And I never even knew who they were the day before. Now, they were probably following me for several months, but I didn't know who they were. So we, we're, we'll be at the house and say, hey, let's go and sign contracts. We, I, I break up my portable printer. We print the contracts. We fill, uh, fill it out. They'll sign it. And then I still got to go get the owner to sign it. So they, they'll give me the money. So I'll meet you tomorrow or I'll meet you in two days when, when we get after the owner signed it and we give you the keys. So when they were leaving, when that tenant buyer uh, was leaving, that potential client was leaving, uh, they would actually, the only thing that they would get from me was a handwritten receipt off of something you get off of Office Depot, you know, the, you know, the yellow, um, excuse me, white, yellow, pink uh, receipt, as well as, as as one piece of paper with the telephone numbers of, uh, of all the utility companies. That's all they got. So imagine uh, being that way where you, know, you you, this became my brand for for several years, and it, and it was and for those of you that have not started shooting video yet, shooting video, this will become your brand. So it's getting your you know, getting yourself out there. Now, I'm going to go into go into a little bit about some of the objects that you may want to uh, take a look at. So I'm going to just go ahead and share my screen. Now, I, I actually, I'll, I've got some of the objects here. I'm going to show them here. Then I'll go online and show you how you, how you can get these online. Now, when, whenever you're shooting video, I'm going to assume you're going to be shooting with your cell phone. It doesn't matter if it's a droid or, or an iPhone. It's going to be with a cell phone. And the first thing, uh, if, if you want to look professional, you have to understand how are the people going to be uh, looking at your video. Now, most people, in my, in my opinion, you, you can agree with me or not, but... How many hours on average would you say you spent uh, editing videos? Um, I actually, uh, the editing part wasn't that long uh, because whenever I was um, um, I, I, I editing the videos, I was I was actually, um, I because I, I know for me, for an example, it would take several takes to get things uh, done right, especially the introduction and, and, the, and the tail slate. Uh, even though I was saying basically the same thing over and over again, I would, it would take me a, a, a few takes. If I knew uh, my introduction, I, I stumbled four times, but the fifth one was good. I pretty much knew where, you know, basically where to go or close to where to go, and I just uh, and I just cut that off. And then this, the same with the tail slate. And then the, the, the second part of the video was the actual tour of the house, actually walking through the house. And then it, it was fairly easy to uh, put it together. Back then, this is you know, several years ago, I use a program called, what are they called? Um, does anybody remember the name? Uh, Movie Maker, Microsoft Movie Maker. That came with that came with PCs. Now, the, the, like the last two or three versions of, 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 of Windows does no, no longer has Movie Maker. So that doesn't exist. I know on iPhones you have, uh, what is it called? Uh, or iPads or, I, or Macs. Um, gosh, I, I know there's one that, that was standard iMovie. Yes, thank you, thank you, Natasha. Um, now, the stuff that I'm going to be showing you guys today is going to be mainly from PCs and Android phones, but you should have something uh, similar in the process as far as iPhones and, and, and Macs. So just going to talk about some of the some of the equipment that you may want to do. Now, all this equipment all together like, probably costs right around $100 if you were to have all this stuff, but I like having all of this stuff just, just, so, I, just so that I have it available. So if you're going to be shooting a lot of video where you're in front of the camera, um, you can, obviously you can use a selfie stick. You can always prop it up against something. But one of the things that I would strongly suggest that you get is going to be your standard six-foot uh, tripod. 
with you know with the expanding with the legs that can expand so that you you can um it, it can contract you can put it in your back seat front seat or whatever so that is just one of the things that I, I would suggest that you have if you're going to be using your cell phone this uh the the tripod will come with a base uh, like this has a little screw uh, on the bottom and a little uh, uh the the edged uh, screw on top and then you also want to get something known as a a a, uh, a phone a holder or phone mount and I'll go over this on Amazon here in just a moment. Another thing you may also want to consider having, and I love this thing, and I've used this for several years, is a wire is a wired lavalier microphone. Okay, so the, the, what this thing does is it, it, it clips uh, to your shirt. Let me see if I can get some white there. Uh, it clips to your shirt where. Uh, where therefore you, you've got the microphone there, you, you're not trying to record from across the hall or across the room. So with this, now this does have this little thing here. This is a clip that will go onto your, your belt. There is a small, like a watch sized battery in there. And mine died about six months ago. And I've been using this thing for like nine years. So the battery lasts a long time. And I would say when you get the wired one, try to get one as long of a cable as possible. Mine is about 16 feet long. The ones that you'll see on Amazon are like six feet long. The reason I like this is that way, uh, if it's only six feet long, it may be tugging on my shirt and I can't get too far from the camera. If I was going to do something like, say, from a whiteboard, I need that extra distance. So I would say go ahead and go over the longer cord. It would just make things a little bit easier for you. And, and I'm going to show you how I use all this stuff here in, here in a moment. When we talked about a tripod, that was, that was your standard uh, five to six foot tripod. I also like having short tripods, tabletop tri tripods. These these can sit on, uh, on a table, and that would let's say for an example, you're at Toastmasters and you're uh, and you're all uh, seated behind desks, and you don't want your your big tripod to get in the way. You can put this in right in front of you where, where you're sitting, uh, turn and turn it on. So so it's just there uh, directly in front of you. So this is a nice little device I have as well. A third device I just got this this right here. This is a wireless. Uh, lavalier microphone. And I will show you an example uh, of, of a video that I shot just a couple of hours ago uh, of using this here. So what this is, is this is this is the, the microphone part and it clips to your shirt. And then the other end is a USB-C. So you want to make sure you've got the right connection. This is a USB-C connection and it connects directly to your cell phone. My, my case is too big. It won't fit. So I actually went and bought an extra little piece uh, a little extend a USB C uh, extension. Okay, so this just clips onto that, and this is the USB C, and there it goes. So this is great. Now the the the, um, the wireless uh, microphone you could have maybe you could be you could be like 60, uh, 50, uh, or even seventy feet away. Um, and it was still uh, pick it up, uh, pick it up as, as clean as day. Again, I'm going to show you a video in just a moment as soon as we get done with all the equipment here. And here is one. Here's the last thing that I that I really really enjoy as well. This is a this is a remote uh, device that uh, that connects to when I turn it on. It connects to my phone where I can take a picture from or start a video from a distance. So I love having this because uh, let's say if you're doing a group photo as an example, and you've got 20 people in the room you're doing your Christmas uh, photo, you can have you have have this on onto your phone. Your phone's on a tripod across the room, and you just take and you just start taking the pictures. You, you can just kind of even keep it out of you don't have to do this. You, you can just keep uh, keep it down to your side. And this is this is a great device. If you ever see people on Facebook or uh, Instagram or whatever that do those selfies, but they're like maybe 10 feet away from the uh, from the camera and they're not even looking at the camera. Th this is probably what they're using. So I'm going to share my screen. I will show you what all of this stuff looks like on Amazon. So let me go there real quick. And then I'll ask for a question. Okay, so let me hide the controls. So the first thing that we, that we were talking about was a standard uh, six foot uh, tripod. So as you can see, these you can see the legs down here. This has uh, three extensions. Okay, so so people, so so everybody, um, Renee said something uh, in the chat there that you guys might want to pay attention to. So again, this is your standard six foot tripod. You can see it's sixty inches. So that's actually. Um, so that's five times 12. And then this is only five foot, but try to you know, go with one that's 50 inches or longer. 
as you can see, the prices are usually, I like to say, between $20 and maybe $30. So the, they're not that expensive. The, the next thing that we're talking about was the phone holder. Now, the phone holder, for those of you, uh, you can see, this connects directly to the base with that screw. So that way, they, they can uh, stay together. Now, and the, now, those run about uh, $20. Now, if you're buying a tripod, the phone holder may actually come with it. So uh, newer tripods are often uh, 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 have, having that to, uh, have that as, as part of one of the accessories. So don't go buy one unless, uh, or at least check with the accessories with the tripod that you're looking at buying. The next one we were talking about, this is the lavalier wired microphone. You can see here, this has an audio jack uh, here. So make sure that you have a, a good audio jack uh, for yourself. Uh, or uh, some, some microphones come with a USB-C uh, connection. So uh, make sure that you have the right connection that goes into uh, your pro a particular phone. And those run like 12 bucks, not, not too expensive. Uh, on Amazon again, this was, uh, I just, as you can see on April 27th, this is when I bought the, uh, uh, the, the lavalier uh, microphone. And let me go ahead and click on this, and open a new window. So uh, as you can see there, it, th this one actually comes with uh, two microphones and then one connection. So you can actually, with this one, have a conversation. Like say you're doing a, a live podcast outdoors um, and, you're, and you're recording with your cell phone, you can, you can ha actually have two different uh, microphones going on into the same device at the same time. Obviously, it's good, if, you know, and, and then the case itself is also the, the charging port. So in this particular case, at the very, on the back, let me see if they have a picture of it. Hundred and sixty four feet range is what this says. Is that that's what that says, and and the back yeah, on the back on the on the back side is where the charging port is, and then you have a little cable that plugs in into a USB device. Since so my phone uh, 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 case is is uh, longer than that little extension there, I actually had to buy one of these extenders, and uh, these are USB 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 C uh, 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 extenders. Let me see again; it's not opening up. And there you go. When you buy them, you get a case of three, and they are only uh, nine bucks, so not very expensive at all. And then the last thing was the, um, or th this is the mini tripods here. Uh, you can see they range like ten to twelve bucks. And and then this is the this is the, the remote that, that I was talking about as well. You can have it where it's just the, the just the camera, or it's the, it's the camera and the video. Or as uh, Renee said, uh, the S Pen for the Galaxy phone can serve as a remote uh, for uh, 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 photos and videos. And thank you for sharing that, Renee. So that's all that I have as far as the equipment is concerned. Now I'm going to go into two different uh, pieces of software that I'm going to uh, suggest that you have. Uh, we can probably pause uh, once we go, go into this. As far as um, uh, as far as that is concerned, are there any questions? Uh, on the software, or on the hardware uh, side of things. So I want to make sure that everybody's on the, on the same page as, as we're moving forward. Or let's put it this way, because a lot of times people are, are quiet. Uh, put, put a two in the chat box if you don't have a question. And if you do have a question, you can say, you can raise your hand, you can uh, put a one, uh, and then we'll, we'll pause for the question. Again, I want to make this as interactive as possible. Oh yeah, Renee just sent me a message, a private message saying that um, if you if you want, you can become an affiliate, an Amazon affiliate, and, and buy these from yourself, and then you would get a small uh, a small commission on on the on your own uh, uh, purchase. And I have done that before too. Okay, so if there's no questions, let's go ahead and look at the uh, two pieces of software you may or may not. Well, one you should have or could have, and the other one is, is going to be um, uh, optional. Now, I've played around with uh, software, uh, video editing software for a long time. As I mentioned before, I used to use uh, Microsoft Movie Maker, but on the newer versions of, of Windows, they stopped using it. So when I got new computers, now all of a sudden Microsoft Movie Maker was no longer available. Again, you've got iMovie for your, uh, for your Mac users. 
But for those of you that are um, that don't have those, there are a number of different kind of software utilities out there, and I've used quite a few of them. However, the one that I found to be the best and that I've seen so far is this one that's called DaVinci Resolve or DaVinci Resolve uh, 18. Now, they're this made by a company known as Black Magic Design. Now, before they did not have a website, uh, the company did not have a website. They had to go to one of those computer uh, company websites uh, to find it. But right now, you, you can find it. So it's DaVinci Resolve uh, 18. You, we're going to go, uh, go ahead and go there. And so is that back? Uh, it's just just Google it, and then it will take you there. So you'll see the the DaVinci Resolve 18. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, edit basically Hollywood style movies uh, on this thing. Now there is a free version and a paid version. The, the the free version is extremely powerful, more powerful than what I need. So you don't really you don't really need uh, the the paid version unless you're going to be really getting into a movie editing and beyond what uh, beyond the DaVinci Resolve 18 would do. And so, so we just go down here, just go down, and I would suggest going ahead and downloading it. Now, I also would say if you've got a, a, an older computer, like something that's four or five years old, this might not work on, uh, on it. I would say it's probably download it anyway. If it doesn't work, then uninstall it. So it's not going to, it's not going to ca cause any uh, issues. Now, I've, re I've probably recorded and, or it's not recorded, but uh, edited. Uh, well, as you guys may have seen, I have my curriculum. I have 17 courses. All of my courses have, were uh, edited on uh, DaVinci Resolve. All my videos, if you saw any of my videos on, um, on Meetup, like introducing the, the, this, um, uh, the, the, the group, that was all edited on DaVinci Resolve. And as you can see, the, 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 the logo for DaVinci Resolve is going to be uh, like three little bubbles. I don't see it up here, but this is DaVinci Resolve right there. It is, it's one of my default programs. A second program that I suggest that you guys do, you don't have to worry about this on YouTube, but if you're going to be uh, creating online courses and you're going to be uh, uploading them to like things like Thinkific or um, let's, uh, whatever the other ones that are, uh, you may need to get another one, especially when you've got longer videos. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and Google this for you guys and show you where to get it. It's called Handbrake. So we got download for uh, uh, download for Mac and uh, regular download. Since I have a PC, I'm going to go ahead and go, go there now, and just click on the first one. And now you, depending on which version of Windows that you have, you will pick uh, which one is uh, is best for you. So if you're a Mac, you for ten point thirteen or later, and for Windows for ten or later. Um, if you want to, uh, whichever one that you want to use. Now, Handbrake, this is my other one. You can see it right there at the bottom, Handbrake. What that does is it, it reduces the file size of uh, of your uh, recording. So for an example, if your file size is too big, some of your your your, your platforms won't, it, it won't accept it. So if you have come up with that issue, this is where Handbrake comes, into, comes up very handy. And it, and it is actually pretty simple to use, and we'll talk about that in a, in, a, in a moment. Okay, so let me. I'm going to stop sharing right now, and then uh, if y'all want to start, um, uh, if y'all want to actually download the DaVinci Resolve or Handbrake, or at least have those windows popped up so you can download it after the end of this call, then I would suggest go ahead and doing that. Now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to. Um, talk to you about some, I forgot to talk about this uh, a little bit earlier, are going to be some other optional items that you can have uh, for your, uh, whenever you are going to be doing your uh, recordings. Um, the first thing is a lot of times people have uh, have trouble remembering everything that they're going to be saying, or at least all the topics that we talk about when they do a video. So one of the things I like to do sometimes is I'll go and get a whiteboard. That's my whiteboard right there. That's the, that, that's going to be the, the, the topics of what I'm going to be recording in just a moment. So here's a whiteboard uh, with uh, on an easel with dry erase markers and an eraser. Okay, so dry erase boards are great because what you can do with those is you can put those behind the camera. So whenever you're talking to the camera, you just glance over at the whiteboard, and then you're going to have uh, an example of, of things that you can be uh, can remember. Um, obviously, you can also get a, a teleprompter on your cell phone. 
but I probably would not re recommend that, especially if you're going to be too far away from the cell phone. And I've seen people have teleprompters on their uh, on their laptops, and maybe they have an assistance that's uh, that's uh, having it move forward as uh, uh, as you're as you're reading it, or actually have it timed to it slowly moves forward uh, on a regular pace. So those are other things that you can have or use whenever you are going to be doing your uh, recording. So who's ready for me to actually go and create a video? And then we'll edit it and you're ready. So Michael's the only one with a screen up, so I'm going to have to assume he's uh, all good. So what I'm going to be doing is, uh, yes, and Ruth said yes as well. So what I'm going to be doing is my my phone mount doesn't, my phone would not fit in my phone mount with, with rubber casing on. So I always have to take off my rubber case. So, 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 I, so I still have the frame, uh, the brace for the frame, but uh, it's, but now that the rubber is removed. And what I'm going to do then is uh, on the on the bottom of my phone, I don't know if it's going to show it or not, but let me see here. So right here is the, is the USB port, the, 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 the little rectangle uh, USB-C port. The, right here on the right is a little round port, and that's the audio jack. Okay, so since my microphone my wireless microphone uh has an audio jack on it i'm going to plug this into i'm going to make sure y'all can see this because i don't that i'm going to be plugging that into the audio jack of my phone so i'm going to put the the, the, the tripod right there and you're going to see me actually do an actual recording i'm going to move my camera around a little bit so you can see it a little bit better and i'm going to create a video for you and i'm doing this on the fly so i have no idea what i'm going to be talking about so anyway let's go So you can see I have the audio uh, jack into the phone. Normally, what I, I like to do is well, I'll make, make sure the, cable, the cords are not all connected. Oops, one way. So I've got the, the, the battery pack right here. And then I've got the clip on here. And normally what I like to do is I, I have this go up my shirt so the cord isn't standing out in front of me. If I was wearing a black shirt, it may not matter. And then I'm going to go ahead and have the microphone there on, on, my, on my shirt. As you can see, the cord goes down the inside of my shirt. The only cord you see is going up here on the collar. And the battery pack goes into my pocket so it's, so it's not dangling. And let me go ahead and open up the tripod. Normally for me, I my legs are usually fully extended. This could I'm six foot tall. And then I'm going to put the phone on the, I'm going to put the, the, the mount back onto the, the, the camera. So now it's locked in. So the mount, the mount is part of the camera now. It's, it's part of the base. And one thing when you're shooting video, I was talking about this earlier. You always, whenever you're going to be shooting video, the first one, of the first thing you have to always know and understand is how are they going to be viewing that uh, the content? Are they going to be on YouTube? If they're going to be on YouTube, then you need to always record your videos in landscape mode. Because if you shoot like this and your screen is like that, the screen meaning your, your computer screen is like that, then what you're going to see is like you sometimes, I'm sure you've seen in the news or other kind of shows where it shows you got the uh, the image, the video playing, and you got the fuzzy things on the on the sides. So if you're going to be recording for TikTok, if you're going to be recording specifically for Instagram, then shoot in the vertical mode or portrait mode. If you're going to shoot for anything else, put it in landscape mode. You need to be well aware of that, because to me, if you're creating a course and you're trying to be um, uh, trying to be professional, having it in the wrong mode is just not going to work. And I had a question. Would you recommend a, a light ring? Yes. Uh, if you don't have ample light, you, you can use a light ring. When I shoot my videos, I don't normally have it. But if I were to put my glasses on and I look up, you will see a light ring right there, right behind my computer. So I, I do use it for well, when I'm uh, recording on my laptop. And that would be uh, another very handy device. So for me, uh, I'm, I'm going to speak a little bit louder because I'm farther away from the camera. And I'm going to beat the chair. And so, so here, here is the, the light ring here. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, the cord got uh, tangled. Um, so now I'm going to actually put this on, on the, on the uh, tripod. 
Let me go put that on. We turn on the phone, open the code, the phone speak a little bit louder. And, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on the camera part of my phone. So as y'all can see, I, ha I do have the camera uh, going right now. The camcorder is, is the video uh, portion of the phone. So for me, it's just moving it to, uh, to the next one. It, it actually was on video. Now, whenever you're shooting video like this, uh, you can either shoot with one of your back-facing cameras, which is your better camera, or you can shoot with your front-facing camera, uh, which is, uh, is it, which is the one with a, with a lower resolution. For me, my camera is right there. So what I'm shooting is the upper, uh, the upper left-hand corner. So whenever you're shooting video, I would re recommend that you have the, the, the camera part on the top part. So if you have to flip the phone the other way, that's perfectly fine. And whenever you're talking into the camera, you, you're keeping kind of like your side vision uh, or peripheral vision on the uh, on what, you know, what's going on, but you're, you're always gonna be looking directly into the camera itself, okay? Now, if you're using a back-facing camera, which is fine, um, you can do that as well, but you may step out of frame. So I always like using a front-facing camera to make sure I stay within frame. Now, also when I shoot video, I oftentimes will have um, some kind of a motion in the video. And what that basically means is maybe I walk into the video or I walk out of the video. Okay, the legs weren't fully extended on one of the legs. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a video promoting my upcoming workshop. And I'm gonna talk about these uh, uh, six different things there. So the video is probably gonna be about one minute in length. I'm gonna also raise it. So I'm by eye level with the camera. And I'm gonna shoot a, basically a, a one minute video on, uh, on my upcoming workshop so that, so I can show, so show you how to uh, do the editing and stuff like that. So I'm stepping away from the camera again. And I've got my microphone on. And this thing's slightly cockeyed. So, oops. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the record button. And remember, I, I, whenever I'm shooting video, I'm well aware um, that I'm going to be editing it. So I, I, I'm okay with you know garbage in the front end, garbage in the middle, garbage in the end. I know I, I know I'm going to be editing it in a moment. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the record button. And it is now recording, and I and I'm going to show this in a, in a moment. I'm going to be cutting this out in, in, in a moment. So, in, in this particular video, I'm going to actually walk into the camera, so I have uh, so I have motion uh, as the uh, at the beginning of this video. I'm going to lower it a little bit. Okay, and Hello, my name is Kevin Dunham with Optimal Performance Academy, and we're talking to you a little bit about an upcoming workshop that we have coming up called the Business Kickstarter Workshop. This is a workshop that's a one day full. I'm going to take, uh, take two. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Dunham. Let's do this again. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Dunham, the founder and lead trainer for Optimal Performance Academy. And today I want to talk with you a little bit about our upcoming workshop that's coming up very, very soon. It's called the Business Kickstarter Workshop. This workshop is a full one-day event where we're going to be talking about your business and how you can become more successful in running and operating your business. Some of the things that we're going to be talking about are going to be like motivational forces. You know, what's motivating you and how can you actually even motivate your clients even better? A second thing we'll be talking about is your association with money. Do you realize that most people have a negative association with, with money, even though they're trying to make more money? And that disconnect will cause them to actually hurt their own business. The third thing we're going to be talking about are your limiting beliefs. What's holding you back? What's keeping you from doing what you've been wanting to do? And what's causing you not to actually go and get those things that you've been wanting to get? What is limiting you from moving forward? Another thing is, who is on your power team? How are you going to build your team that so you've got this big group of people all in support of helping you achieve more in your business? And then we'll be going into, how are you going to do this market research for your business? How do we know that your business is a viable business? But we'll be going into this as well. The next thing we'll be covering is effective branding strategies. How do you work on your brand and how can you actually become more successful? And then the last thing is, what are all the action steps that you're going to be taking? So for register for this event, go to our website at www.optimalperformanceacademy.org forward slash BKW. That's that's for business kickstarter workshop. So again, that's optimalperformanceacademy.org 
forward slash BKW. And I look forward to seeing you guys in that workshop. And until next time, guys, be amazing. So that was the recording. I'll go ahead and stop the recording and move, move the camera out of the way. Unplug the audio. Take off the microphone. Pull it out of my pocket. And then leave the three ends on the microphone. Or on the OCC meeting, 11.30. I'm sorry? First and third Saturday. The, you might say this already, but where do I look into? First you always look into the camera. Uh, you always look into the camcorder. You don't look at the screen. That's just in your peripheral vision. You're looking directly into the camera First itself. So you make an eye line directly to the people. One, two, three. Uh, oh, so she her lunch too. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. And, and, and now what I'm going to be showing you is what you do on a, uh, on a, uh, on a um, droid. Okay, so let me share screen. First and third Saturday. Okay. I take it you guys can probably see my screen. I'm going to hide these floating things that you guys don't see. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize that. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to plug my phone into my cell phone, or excuse me, my laptop into the my cell phone. So I've got the USB-C plugged into my First, cell phone. Second, third. Uh, okay, somebody's talking. That probably needs to mute. Ada, I think it's you. Okay, so I've, I just plugged my cell phone into my laptop. Okay, and what's going to happen First. is that um, I'm going to open up a new tab. Is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see my, my phone will now be discovered by my computer. There's Kevin's Galaxy S10e. And what I'm going to, I'm going to uh, click on. So I'm now looking at my, I'm looking at my cell phone um, through my uh, through my laptop. I have on on Droid phones they have an internal storage, and then they have a, a, an SD card that you can uh, also use as well. Okay, so if you're on a Droid, what you what you can do is you go to your SD card, and then you find your folder that's marked as DCIM. Uh, uh, World Super Moms, I think is, you might need to meet yourself. So you go to DCIM. Now DCIM stands for Digital Camera Images. Okay, so this is where all your pictures on your cell phone are stored. So if you've got a phone with that's pretty much full of pictures, you can start taking pictures off and move them to your laptop by going into uh, this folder here. So now I'm going to go into camera. And these are all the images that are currently on my phone as well as the one video that I just shot. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom to grab that video. So here's the video that I just shot. You will see the file name. And this is how Droid does it. The file name is 2023-0808 for uh, August 8. Um, this is uh, 155303. It means that we shot this at, we started shooting this at 3.53 and three seconds. So that, that is the unique timestamp uh, for that. So at this point, I'm going to hit the control X, and then I'm going to go and put it on my background. I'm going to hit control V for paste. And you see that it's being moved. I'm not copying it. I'm moving it over from one to the other. Okay. Now, on, on iPhones, I'm sure you'll probably have something slightly different, but, but that's how you do it on the Droid phones. So I'm going to go ahead, ahead and close this. I don't need this anymore. I can even unplug my phone if I wanted to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this uh, image over here. Now, I do want to show you, now that you're, I'm sharing my screen, another image uh, or another video that I already shot. Now, this did not require much editing, but this is one that I shot. And this is the one with the, uh, with the wireless um, uh, uh, um, uh, microphone, uh, the, wireless lapel, uh, the wireless lapel uh, microphone. So I need to be able to share sound. So let me turn that on, share sound. And uh, Michael, since you're the one, only one that has their camera, uh, I'm going to depend on you to uh, uh, do this for me. I'm going to go ahead and play this video. And Michael, you give me a thumbs up if you can hear it.
Hello, this is uh, Kevin Dunlap, and I want to tell you a little bit more about how these wireless microphones work. As you can see, you can be a very few feet away, like in my case, I'm probably about 40 or 50 feet away, and this is the microphone uh, picking up the audio very, very well, even at this distance. So if you're looking to be filming outside or you're going to be more than 10 or 15 feet away from the camera, having a wireless microphone is going to be great. Also, think about this. If you're going to be recording yourself while on stage, this will be one of the best ways to do that because you can be farther away with your phone on a tripod in the back of the room and you still get very good audio instead of having to worry about the audio traveling across the room. So there you go with the wireless microphone and I'll see you shortly. Hello, this is uh, Kevin Dunlap. So that is an example of the, that I, I'm wearing the same shirt, I'm wearing the same clothes I was earlier today. If, there, if there's a lag, it probably is uh, due, uh, due to internet connection. Uh, and yeah, that, that's probably it. So that's, whoops. So that's, that, that is that, that is that wireless lapel mic. I absolutely love it. I've only had it for two couple of months, but I absolutely love it. So uh, especially, and one of the things I would, I would strongly also suggest is that whenever you are doing something uh, live, like uh, on stage or you're, you're speaking or anything like that, always record yourself. The reason being, you never know when you might may want to put together a, a demo video um, or something like that. And having stuff where you on stage, you in front of a room um, is going to be a huge benefit. And then if you never use it, you never use it. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. And I'm going to go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve. Now, DaVinci Resolve is one of my programs I use a lot. So I have it on my taskbar. And I also have Handbrake on there. And for those of you that are only doing audio uh, editing, uh, you have Audacity. Um, so anyway, I, I'm going to go ahead. And, and this is a photo editor. So if you, if you want to be uh, editing photos, not inside of um, Canva. I'm talking about photos like you increasing the brightness, the textures and stuff like that. That's the one there. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hit the DaVinci Resolve. Now, when you if you're getting the DaVinci Resolve, they will have the beta version. And for me, I didn't like the beta version uh, only because uh, it um, because uh, because the, 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 it, there was a there was a time lag. So the venture job just opened up. It just opened up the wrong window. So let me go there. So th this is what's going to happen when you when you first see it. Now these are previous videos that, that I've done. Here's here's my test one uh, from earlier today, and I want to make sure I can see Zoom. Uh, so that's this is from earlier today. So what you want to do is uh, at the very beginning you can hit this thing where it says new project in the lower right hand corner. Now um, so let me go ahead and click on that. And a, a, a new thing will come up. Now, this is the project name. This is not the file name. So you can call this whatever you want. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do this as a, um, uh, this is called a, a control A, a meetup video test. Actually, no, because I, I might actually use this video. B K P W uh, workshop intro. So it's going to uh, so it's going to open up another uh, another window here. Now this window is going to be full screen. Now uh, with the DaVinci Resolve, uh, all of their menu, they've got their menu items up here on top, and they've got your your main menu items here on the bottom. Okay, the bottom ones are the ones you're going to be mainly uh, concerned with. There are seven of them on the bottom. As we see here. So the first one is what's called as media. This one here on the floor left is media. The, the second one is what is known as, as cut. This is basically where you're going to be uh, moving things over, uh, like videos, audios, as well as your videos over in. The next one is your edit. That's the one with the three lines, uh, the three uh, horizontal lines with the red bar. The next one after that is going to be your, um, um, your, your fusion. Now, I don't use fusion at all. Uh, we'll go with that as an example. I don't use this uh, very much. I don't use color either. And, the, and remember, this is the free version that I'm showing. So it's extremely powerful of our free version. The next one after that one is going to be what they call Fairlight, 
which I never use either. And there, there's the rocket ship here, and this is what they use for deliver. This is how you uh, you save and, and and finalize your video. Now, in in video, for those of you that don't know, and I would say a lot of people that shoot video probably don't know this. Uh, in video, when you there is no such thing as saving the video. That word does not exist. In in um, in video editing, when you're saving a video, you're actually doing what's called rendering. The word is rendering, R-I-N-D-E-R-I-N-G, or render. I'm going to render the video, okay? Um, and then the next thing is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to upload that video. Since the video is behind my screen here, I'm going to go ahead and just move that. I'm going to move this video to my second screen on the right-hand side just for a moment, just so, so it's not in the way. Now I'm going to go back to DaVinci. And now I'm going to grab the video from my other screen, and I'm dragging it over. And, and I would drop it. So it's going to ask to change the frame rate. Now I've never, I've always been told to go ahead and do change the same, uh, the frame rate. That is the default. So go ahead and do that. And now this is your edit of the video, and you'll see the audio there. Do you transfer your files to an external hard drive as well? Um, after I'm done, I often will um, uh, because I've had, uh, I've actually had one of my external hard drives actually crash. I think somebody's trying to get in. Um, I, I do uh, my videos on, on external hard drives. I, I will show you what I mean by that. Is if I go, I go down here and there's the Galaxy, and you see this uh, Seagate uh, portable. Uh, that is my external hard drive. This is the classroom. These are the meetup events. These are the upcoming classes. Um, excuse me, these are the upcoming classes. And then after I'm done recording, I put them all up there. So I, I do store everything uh, off my computer because these uh, files get uh, very, very large uh, to, uh, to answer your question. So let's go ahead and go back. Now, after you have everything uploaded, you'll see everything over here in the top left-hand corner. And then what you want to do is you want to start editing. Now, you uh, on here, you have these different tracks. You will see video is always going to be blue. Video and pictures are always going to be blue. And audios are always going to be green. And you will see the waveform right there. Now, you have different levels of, of tracks. As an example, let me grab something I wasn't expecting to grab. Let's, let me say, let's say I was going to put an image in here, a, a 16 by 9 image. So here, here's an image that I'm not going to use, but I'm just going to throw it in there. And you will see now that, it's, uh, that, that the image is on there. In DaVinci Resolve, as far as the video is concerned, whichever the one that's on the top, me the, uh, at the highest part, that's the one that's going to be the default that you when you when when you are recording or uh, when you're rendering. So if I were to play this right now, and it is now recording, and I and I'm going to show this in a, in a moment. So you can see that audio was was playing, but this but this image was on top. So the, the the main things that you can do is you can move, you you uh, you can move uh, images to whatever you want. You can go to the uh, the edge and you can make them as small or as big as you want. That is all up to you. Now, one of the things because uh, I love the movie the the Matrix, and I look at this audio uh, these, uh, this this wave file here, and I and, it, and it's like reading the code. You know, I'm watching that those little green squigglies. So I know, for an example, if I'm making this as a slideshow, I usually notice that pauses are when I take a breath and get ready to say the next sentence. So you can start reading this waveform to make uh, to make your uh, your your slides as long as you want. But right now, we're not going to be dealing with slides. I'm going to go ahead and take that out. You can also, um, I, uh, let me go ahead and open up another tab. Let's just go into here for an example. And I'm going to uh, get, get this other video and throw it in here as well, just, just, just to make it work. I want to make sure I can see it. I'm going to get this, uh, this video and also put it in. I don't know why the, the audio. Can we hit Control Z because I don't know. Normally, you could put in another video, and the, the video will be on top, and the, and the green one will be on the bottom. So just be aware that they that they move together like that. So if I were to put this on the second track, uh, you will see that they that, that they go together. The main thing that you're going to be doing on here is 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 that you're going to be editing for content. There's two buttons that you need to be well aware of. One is going to be this little red pointer button, and the other one is going to be this razor blade. 
Okay, so whenever you, you, you see something that you don't like, like say for an example, I know this is me just introducing the video of, of before I started shooting, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and get the razor blade and let's assume I'm gonna start right here and then I'll go to the pointer and, I, and then I'll make sure that one is highlighted in red and you can do one of two different things. You can either hit the backspace button or you can hit the delete button. They, they do com uh, completely different things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of hitting the backspace button. You see this thing disappeared and this uh, and this uh, wave did not move at all. I'm going to hit control so it comes back. And this time I'm going to hit the delete button. And you can see the whole waveform move to the left. Okay. So so there, and there's a there are times uh, there's times and places when you use those. Now here's the here's the here here is the here is the uh, Again, and just show you uh, on uh, on on the different times that you would be using it. Let's assume I get that out, out there, and um, and then I will get this one, and I'm going to move it and say I, I want to keep that one there. So I want to make make sure it's on track two. If I were to if I were to delete this button here, you'll see that thing moved. So if you've got these things on top of each other, this can start screwing some things up. And remember, the, the video that's on top is the one that's going to be uh, saved. Now, also, if you've got two of these tracks going on at the same time and you're trying to edit uh, a, a, a two levels, there is this thing here that says mute. So if I were to play this right now, and it is now recording, and, I, and, and I'm going to show this, video, I'm going to actually moment, walk into the this camera. Out. And, and, so I so you all can see or hear that both audios were going on at the same time. So, so to keep that from happening, I can go in here and, and click the mute button there and then play it again and you only hear the mute And it is now recording. And, I, and I'm gonna show this in a, in a moment. I'm gonna be cutting this out. So you, you see, uh, that, 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 that's where those become useful. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and edit this as it normally would be. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete button. Everything moves to the, uh, to the left. And now I'm just going to go ahead and start uh, playing. And then I'm, because I know I made a mistake the first couple of times. So I can probably almost uh, skip that part. And let's let's go and put the uh, started uh, right about here. If I wanted me walking in, I got to go back a little bit further. So delete. And now let's go ahead and play. Hello, my name is Kevin Dunlap with Optimal Performance Academy. And I want to talk to you a little bit about an upcoming workshop that we Okay. That we have coming up called the Business Kickstarter Workshop. Now, every once in a while, I will sometimes see that my words don't match my mouth. And what I've noticed what I can do with that to, uh, to fix that is that I will just minimize the, the screen and then open it back up. And then everything should be, uh, should be working okay from that point. This is a workshop that's a one day full. So I'm going to take, uh, take two. So as you can see, uh, you guys saw that I screwed up at least three times before I actually got started. So it's okay, and when you're shooting video, it's okay uh, for, for those things to occur. But once I got started, I, I was pretty comfortable with what I was saying. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that part as well. And you, as you can see, as I'm moving this across, I'm, I'm seeing what where it is in the image frame. Um, so let's, let's, let's uh, stop there and then hit the delete button. So I'm going to have me walking in. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Dunlap, the founder and lead trainer for Optimal Performance Academy. And today I want to talk with you a little. Now, one of the things I, I, I do want to discuss is that um, um, everybody, everybody understands that there's 60 minutes in an hour, correct? I can only rely on Michael and Solomon uh, to agree with me because I don't know the videos. And everybody understands that there's 60 seconds in a minute, correct? So when you're editing video, the video is actually broken down into 25 frames per second. Okay, I have noticed that sometimes when I'm, uh, you know, when I was recording a Zoom video, my mouth is uh, is a little bit off uh, from that. So what I need to do normally would that do is I would actually get the audio uh, version of the file. I put the audio on the second track, and I'm usually noticed that it's off by 12 frames. So what I would do is I mute the one that that came with the video, and I'm going to use the one that was separate. But I, but I'm able to move the audio so that it actually um, matches up with my mouth. It's a, so just in case things like that happens, and it has happened to me several times. 
little bit about our upcoming workshop that's coming up very, very soon. It's called now, I, I do know that the, the, I did not need to edit any of this video here. I was on a pretty good roll. I was using the, the whiteboard uh, as background uh, for, my, for my views. I tried not to look at the whiteboard that much. And I go here. And, oh, this is my signature uh, until next time. Be amazing. So let, me, let me go back. I look forward to see you guys in the workshop. And until next time, guys, be amazing. So I'm going to edit there, go and cut on this side, make sure I have the red arrow, and then I'm going to get rid of everything on the end. I'm going to just hit the delete button. So now you've got your edit, your video edited. Now you're going to uh, you're going to save it. And remember, again, it's called rendering in, uh, in, in film editing. So you want to go to the spaceship here. So basically the only ones that you're using, maybe here when you upload your files, you've got your, your editor here, and then you can go to the spaceship to delete. Now, all the defaults that you see up here are, uh, are the standard defaults, and there's nothing that you need to change. The first thing that you're going to be needing to do is right here is going to be the file name. And then, uh, th then you've got to pick a location. Now, by default, and I've done this uh, ever since the very beginning, is I'll hit this Browse button, and it's going to ask me, where do I want to save it? I always save it in the same folder. It always goes to the same folder. And then once it's, once it's done, then I move it into the folder that I, that I want it to, to, to finally be at. As an example, if I'm back here and I'm doing one of my courses, <clears throat> one, of my, you know, one of my courses, all online courses, and let's say uh, Roadmap for Business Success, I have like a section one, and then this is, this is on the hard drive, so sometimes it takes a moment for it to wake up. And then I'll move that video over uh, to this uh, to this lesson. So this is lesson two. Uh, I will have the video right there. So I, I moved them all over. If you're doing this for YouTube, it doesn't really matter what name you give your uh, your file. However, if you're doing a course, I would recommend giving it a unique file name. So when all your videos are on the platform, you can tell which one are apart. I usually the format I use. I go off the initials of the course then dash, then this, uh, the section number, uh, uh, dot, then the lesson number. That way all my RM or my roadmap classes are together or all of my, if I go get out of roadmap and I pick a different course, let's say uh, online program creator. And let's go to, go to three, uh, lesson one. And you will see that course is called online program creator 3.1. So that's just my naming structure. Just so I can, just so I can find those at a later time. However, if you're doing this for YouTube, you can call it whatever you want. So again, I'm, I'm going to save it to the uh, to the video folder. Hit save. Okay, just uh, hit cancel because I'm not changing it. And now you want to uh, give uh, give it a file name. So this time I'm going to call it the Business Kickstarter Workshop uh, Intro. And then I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the left. Now, all of these QuickTime H.264 auto, those can, you can leave those the same. And I can go ahead and add to render queue. Okay. So it's, it's going to pop up. This is where this is where I want it to go. So it's going to be right next to the video that you guys just watched. I'm going to hit save. And then you'll see over the uh, upper right hand side, the queue has just been started. So then you have to go in here and hit render all. So it's at us up here. So the frame rate was jumping between the can go and uh, now one thing I forgot to, get or forgot to cover. One thing I will show you in just a moment. And now, what do you your course so far? You can either uh, uh, say them say them out loud or put them in the chat. Because we still got about 30, 45 seconds. So Michael, everybody's good. Now, uh, now, now, when we uh, when we go back, once I'm done with this rendering, I'm going to go back to the editing and show you basically how you can put in subtitles. 
Now, subtitles are, are great if you're doing uh, a short videos. Um, they can take they can take a lot of time if you're going to be doing uh, um, you know long uh, long videos. So usually I would use subtitles when in my introductions, but I didn't want to spend 45 minutes uh, working on on, a, uh, on the subtitles. And we're at 62 percent. That's two thirds. So you see the rendering uh, takes takes a little bit of time. Now, I've never toyed with the idea of editing a video while it was rendering. Um, I always waited until the very end uh, and did this. Now, for those of you who are creating longer videos and then you want to make them shorter, I'm going to show you how to, how to, how to do that uh, here in a moment as well. Okay, we're at 90%. Okay, we're okay. It's going to so everything is done. I'm going to go back to editing. If you're over here on the uh, on the left hand side, you will go under this thing called the toolbox, and then you go under tiles. Uh, tiles is is where you will be getting the um uh the the uh, the subtitles. Essentially, are you using the uh, whichever one that you want to use? I'm going to use the the middle or lower third. I'll put it up top and I don't start talking until there. And then when I get there, whatever, I, I start listening to the video. Oops, got to move the red line. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin. And normally I would I just get rid of title. Well, actually, I you know, well, I usually get rid of title and then I scroll down to the to the next one. This is what takes a little, a little bit of time. And as and that's where you put it, and that's where you'll put it. So if I were to go back, hello everybody. My name is Kevin Dunlap, the founder. So I'm I'm going to take this uh, to the left and take it just before the red line. And you'll see down here the waveform that right there is probably when I say the word the, and then you just you have to bring another one over and keep bringing them over. So this is a fairly uh, time involved uh, process. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Z so I can undo this. And now I'm going to go back to the end. So let's let's do this small part of your of your video, and you and you ended it there. Once I've, once I've saved it, I can come back here and let's say there's more video uh, left and I just deleted it. I, let's say this is a, this is another, uh, the next uh, section that you want to make into a video. So I can at that point go there, hit the delete button, and now start editing the, the second half. So that's a quick way of, um, uh, to save you time if, you, if you're trying to uh, get a much longer video uh, cut into small, uh, smaller videos. So that's it for the DaVinci Resolve. Any questions on DaVinci Resolve at this moment in time? Yeah, I just gave you a basic uh, introduction to DaVinci. It's a, a very, very powerful uh, program, but I, I like using it because it gives you so much power and it's free. Is there a split screen option uh, for DaVinci? Um, no, because uh, this only takes up the whole screen. And as, as far as sharing my screen, uh, split screen, uh, I, I don't know how to do that at, at this moment in time. I don't really have anything on the right hand side, except for the chat box and the uh, participants box. So now, now I'm going to go in here and let's say let's say this you're you're making this into a course. Now this is not part of uh, of a YouTube uh, video editing, but this is something that you can. I want to show you guys how to do. Um, I'm not sure. What, I don't know what the other features do. Uh, so uh, this is Handbrake. Again, I'm going to go in and load it up. As you guys may recall, if I were to go to uh, my videos, there's the Business Key Starter Workshop, so it's there. Now I can move it to whatever folder I want to, but now I'm going to upload it to, uh, uh, to YouTube. But now let's pretend, oops. Okay. 
Well, I'm going to go ahead and go to YouTube while Fusion is doing its thing here. Uh, or excuse me, Handbrake is doing its thing here. Oh, there it is. Um, it's, it's going to ask you to, to, to bring in uh, to bring in the folder. And essentially, this is uh, this is what I do with all of uh, all of my trainings. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and bring the photo or the image over. And you will see uh, there it is. And then I'm going to say start to encode. Now, you, you can have a, a go to a different folder. I have it goes to, uh, goes to the same video folder just to keep everything uh, 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 together. So I, I don't have to keep changing the folder every time I, I record a new video. And you, you will see right there that this is going to take about uh, two minutes to, to uh, for this to uh, to render. So let's say go on to YouTube. Now, uh, say uh, say yes if you've got your uh, uh, a YouTube account. And I'm going to answer the question. I have iMovie that I never used. Let me see. I got move things around. I've never I've, I've never owned a a, 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 a an i a Mac computer, so I do not know. But DaVinci is actually uh, you can download that to uh, uh, to Macs as well. So yeah, that is an option. So therefore, you can th therefore you can make your own comparison as to uh, is iMovie better than DaVinci or, or or vice versa. So that's going on. Uh, not a problem. So if you have a YouTube account, uh, please go ahead and say yes. If you do not, please say no. So as you can see, here's the Mac version. Fantastic. So, so it's something I don't have to worry about going through creating a YouTube account. So usually if you've got a Google account, you, you've got a YouTube account. So, so let's go ahead and go, and go on to YouTube. Let's let some things load up. And I'm going to, uh, if, you're, if you're logged into your account, all you have to do to create a, a YouTube video is go up to the upper right-hand corner and hit the Create button. And, uh, and in this case, you can upload the video. Obviously, you can also do a go live, but I'm going to go in and just do upload a video. Um, yes, that, that's very much true, uh, Michael. So, okay, so here it is. So when I hit the Create button, it says uh, to select the files. I'm going to go move the, the image or the video that I just uh, I just recorded. And since now you're going to give yourself a description. Now I've got my default on YouTube. Uh, it's going to say something introduction. And this, it says in the description, optimal performance scanning uh, and final campaign. I would like to introduce you to our course called, and for more information, visit our website. Now this, this right here is very, very powerful for you because the more YouTube videos that you create, um, you, you will have what's called a back link uh, to your website. And I know, uh, I forget which person it was that, that was on there uh, with the back link up before, uh, Michael, I believe it was. Um, when we talk about backlinks, this is going to help with your SEO. So make sure, make sure you have at least one link going to your website in your description. So right right now, I'm just going to call this the business Kickstarter workshop uh, introduction. And optimal forward scan and founder Kevin. Then would like to introduce to our upcoming workshop or small business. Now you, you can write whatever description that you want. If, you have, if you're bad at writing descriptions, then I would say go to ChatGBT and have ChatGBT write your, write your description for you, make changes as, as needed. And I, I'm gonna be okay with this at the moment. I will come back and edit this uh, later on, but as you can see, you can put whatever you want to in the description. Next comes the thumbnail. Once this once this video is completely loaded uh, onto YouTube, it will give you some options here. You can use that, or you can upload a picture. I'm going to just going to say I'm going to upload a, a a picture. I'm going to go to my my external hard drive. Go to workshops, and let's say I'm going to use that image right there. I'm going to use this image as the default. So that is what that's going to be the default image uh, for the uh, for the YouTube video. And then it asks you for about playlists. Now, playlists is just how you're going to be uh, grouping all your pictures or all your videos together. <clears throat> Normally, I have what I call my course introductions. So this is because these are the, the, the short one or two minute videos. If you're shooting a lot of courses, maybe you're, you have a coaching course or you're talking about foreign music or whatever, you're going to add a new playlist to, uh, as well. And you can actually even choose more than one of a playlist that it can be in. 
Once you're done with that, you go ahead and, and, and choose done. And then scroll down. Now, this talks about, uh, yes, it's made for kids. No, it's not made for kids. So uh, that's for you to decide. I usually, since I deal, I don't, I don't do business with children. I always mark mine as no, it's not made for kids because I don't need a, a ten-year-old uh, watching my videos. So that that's kind of irrelevant. You can show more here as well. Also, you'll have your video link. Um, so I, normally, what I do is I will copy this. Now you can do this on this page or any of these uh, or any of these other uh, uh, four pages. Now I am a very um, analytical uh, type person. So what I tend to do is I will um, uh, actually create a spreadsheet uh, of whatever it is that, that I'm selling. So right now we're talking about the Business Kickstarter wor uh, workshop. Um, I can actually, I'll go in here and save it as, you know, as a YouTube teaser video. I, you know, I would put it right there. So you can, so you can just save all your, all your video files for later. If you do a lot of website stuff, you want to keep track of all of your, uh, all of your links uh, for easy reference. Anyway, let's move that out of the way. Go hit the next button. Now, if you, if you did not add subtitles uh, on, uh, on, on iMovie or uh, DaVinci Resolve, you can do it here. It's basically the same process um, is that you, you just play the video and then you start typing uh, you know, what it is. So if you've got a, a file upload, you can do this or you can hit auto sync. I will play this and get, give you the first maybe a few seconds of, of it. Hello, everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna say hello, everybody. Now you don't want to do this as one continuous um, as one continuous file. You want to put uh, a, a line space between each uh, one or one and a half uh, lines going across. So I'm going to go and play this right now. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin. D okay, so it did not appear yet. Let me go back. Today, I want to talk with you. About So this takes a little bit of time to get things lined up. Hello, everybody. I don't, again, normally it would start uh, coming up there, but then uh, it's just probably because it's, uh, I need to. My name is Kevin Dunlap, the founder and lead trainer for. Okay, I don't know why it's not showing up, um, but normally it would start showing up here in white. And then when you go to the next sentence or the next clause, you want to make sure you put a space uh, between that's that's going to that's what's going to cause it to not all appear on one screen. So once that is done, I'm going to actually get rid of it because I don't want to uh, have it look that way. So once you're done with your subtitles, you can hit done, hit next. And then uh, this is where they're going to be checking for uh, uh, copyrighted music. Um, so you, uh, if you want to put music uh, into your videos, I'll show you that here in a moment as well. And, but if you, if you're using copyrighted music, your, your video would get flagged at this point in time. I didn't have any music in this particular one. So I'm just going to hit next. And the, now the, the next section is, is also very important for you is how do you want to save it? Do you want it to be public for everyone to can see unlisted or private? Now, private would be like if you're going to be, uh, let's say you're shooting a, a company training video and all new uh, or, or and all new employees have to go and watch videos. You don't want to have that training video to be public. You may just put it as, as private. So anybody that has access to it can, uh, can have it. Unlisted, it would be like if you have, say, a, a program on your website and this video is to introduce a pro or this is one of your training programs that it's only the people with the link can watch the video. So let's say, for an example, you have a course that you're selling and your course is on YouTube. You would just have you, you would just give them that link and nobody else will be able to see it uh, either. So the, the, that's the difference between the three. And then, of course, the game has got the public. Then we'll hit save. And then this, uh, you, this gives you yet another opportunity to get the link. You can actually share it on Facebook, Twitter, or which is now called X uh, or WhatsApp. I'm going to go ahead and close. And now you now that you will see the video is, is part of your feed. If you don't like the video for whatever reason, you can go to the three dots and then you can also hit the delete forever. So that, that will give you a full control here. Are there any questions so far? I'm gonna cover one or, one or two little bit more things to make sure everybody uh, gets the most out of their, uh, out of their uh, video programs. Any questions at this time?
Quite true. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go into um, the, the, some some uh, some other websites that you may that you may be want to be aware of. If you're going to be putting music uh, into your uh, into your audio or into your program, you're going to there are four websites that I'm going to uh, recommend. I've got them all saved right here under audio sites. The first one I'm going to talk about is it goes goes to youtube.com forward slash c royalty free music. Uh, there, I'm going to I'm actually going to copy that and put it in the chat. So these are these, this is music that you can use on YouTube uh, from YouTube that is that is uh, that is uh, th that you use it as your background music. Uh, so you, know, you just play whatever ones that you like. If you like it, then you just save it to your computer. A second audio site is known as Ben Sound. Now I would recommend uh, giving them a credit in, in the description for uh, for uh, for this thing here. Like uh, and I've downloaded a, a few of these. So Ben Sound, free music for videos. Control V. So there's the, the link for that one. A third one is going to be uh, Pixabay. Now Pixabay is also an image and video, uh, a, a non-audio site for video, uh, videos that have no audio. Uh, they're like 10, 15 seconds long that you can use as well. So this is a pixabay.com forward slash music. Control C, and we'll put that in the chat as well. And then the fourth one is going to be, where's the audio sites? I don't know, there it is, uh, Music Bed. And again, with Music Bed, I would suggest uh, giving the, the, the author uh, a, a credit in the description of your video. So, uh, so these are all royalty-free music. You don't have to pay for them. Now, as an example, I'm going to put in uh, an, a, an audio into my uh, into my file. As you can see now, the uh, that the handbrake has now been rendered. Everything's done with them, so I can go and close them out, and then go back to the video. It is over here. So you'll see that we got this one here, and then we've got this one there. This is the one that's going to be of the smaller file size. So, for, so if I were to go to properties and go to details. You will see that this is 1540 uh, kilobytes, while this one, it, uh, details, while this is 160 kilobytes. So you see, this is a much smaller file size for your uh, for your use. Now let's go ahead and, and put audio into the uh, uh, into the video, and then we'll be wrapping things up. I think that's all that I have. Uh, I just got to remember. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and I forget where I put it. Okay. So I haven't used them because I have uh, the audio files. Um, onto my computer, but let's go ahead and just download a song and just as an example. So let's go back to this one here. Now I've downloaded a few of these here. Um, let's, let's go ahead and play this one. So let's say I, I like that one. So I'm gonna do, a, do the free download. Copy. So, and then let me see where it goes. Okay, I think yeah, they put it up there. So I'm gonna put that in the. Uh, I'm gonna put that on, on the screen that you cannot see, so that I can upload it uh, quickly to the uh, uh, to this. So I'll hit Control Z here. Get rid of that bad stuff. Move the cursor back to the beginning. Get the audio file. Put it down there. And I'm going to play it at full volume. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Dunlap. The founder and the lead trainer is a little bit too loud. And uh, and, uh, and I'll answer that question in a second. So on here, you want to make sure you're on the on the red pointer and, and get to the music. You should see those two little uh, arrows uh, pointing up and down. Now, this would be a lot easier if you had a dial. But if you don't have a dial on your on your laptop, you just have to be able to get your finger and move it slightly left and right to, to increase or decrease the sound. Now, the sound right now is at zero decibels. 
so what, what I'd, I'd, I'd normally do is I usually put mine at negative 15, sometimes negative 20. So I'm just getting this and I'm moving my, 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 my finger slightly to the left to get to negative 15. Let me let, let it go. And then I'm going to play again. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Dunlap. The I'm going to actually make it back to negative 10. Hello, everybody. My name is Kevin Dunlap, the founder and lead trainer for off. So as you can see, uh, um, uh, so, uh, so as you can see, you can you can put that in there. And then normally I will go to the very end, get the, uh, get the razor blade, get the very end of the video there, go back to the pointer and get rid of the, the song. The song is a lot longer than my actual video. And then in this case, I would then render it. So that's, and that would be a royalty free song. So let me see what the questions say. Let's say you are videotaping this Zoom session for your YouTube channel and wanted to use your smartphone as an external camera. How would you connect the phone to the laptop to capture the video and audio? So if you're just going to be, um, if you're going to be shooting a, a second perspective with your, with, your, with your smartphone, again, I don't know by iPhones, but as far as the, um, as far as the uh, Droid phones are concerned, again, my phone is still connected uh, uh, to my laptop. So once I did that, uh, my phone will, will be discovered. And then with that, I would just open that up, go to DCIM for digital camera images, camera, and then you'll get the video, put it on, on your backdrop, put it and then put it into DaVinci or iMovie. And then you have to edit them as, uh, and you do your cuts uh, as, uh, as you need. Okay. The, does that make does that make sense? Okay. So uh, let me see what else do I have. So that's all that, that, that I have as far as, as shooting the, those videos. Remember, if you're creating uh, courses that are going to be um, that are going to be uh, set as, as different lessons to always make sure at the end of your at the end of each lesson that you probably wrap up the lesson saying like so so that's all that we have for lesson a uh, in the next lesson lesson b we're going to be talking about black so you do a quick uh, a quick introduction and then all of that stuff is you know, once, you, once you start getting used to using da vinci uh or i uh, i movie i guess um then that's it, then this becomes a, a lot, lot easier uh, to do. Uh, sorry, use clappers to sync the sound between cameras. Yes, you could do that as well, or any other kind of. Uh, the movie industry uses a, a clapper so that they so they can sync the audio uh, with the video.